two post-game press conference for the 2023 SEC Baseball Tournament. Um, please know that Mo and Ben will have wireless mics on either side. Please raise your hand and identify yourself um, prior to your question. We have head coach Tony Vitello of Tennessee, starting pitcher Seth Halverson. Um, please direct your questions first to Seth. Over here on the right. The rain delay, I know it didn't affect your start, but this, how do you keep busy and how does the team kind of stay focused during the breaks? That can kind of be weird sometimes. Yeah, you know, you're just in this hallway here chatting it up and, uh, you know, getting some snacks, staying, keep, keeping your body ready and just stay ready to go. Back here on the right. Ben, you go lost 24 7. Seth, just when did you find out you were going to start and, and kind of what was your mentality going in? I imagine it felt good to get back and start a game considering you had done it previously in your career. Yeah, yeah it was fun to get back out there at the beginning of the game. I threw a bullpen after South Carolina on that, uh, what was that th after that third game. And so I was getting prepared from that time on. And uh, you know, I, was, I was ready to go. And it was exciting to be, be, be back out there. All right, over here on the front row on the right. How challenging was it to pitch when the rain kind of started coming down, and what you felt like you had working for you? Yeah, it was, it was a, uh, it was fine. You know, getting a new ball after after it's, after it got wet was a, is a good thing to do. So that that was helpful. And then, um, you know, my slider was working pretty well, and j just had some deep counts. But besides that, it was, it was working pretty well. All right, down in front. EricGameBallPlus.com, Tony, kind of a, a struggle in the box today. Kind of from your vantage point, what did you see from the guys in their bats? Um, you know, certainly guys trying. Um, some tough guy in the stands didn't think they were, but I can guarantee our guys are trying. Otherwise, they're not on the field this time around uh, or this time of year. We certainly had some struggles earlier in the year, but I think we got some things sorted out to where we found out what our best defense was. We corrected some base running mistakes. And then our at-bats on the whole, if you look at baseball, it's a game of percentages, have been pretty good. Now, you take one day, anything can happen with the weather, with a starting pitcher. Um, wind's blowing one way or the other. There's, there's a lot that can happen. So you just got to go out there and play. And I thought our guys did that. But, you know, things obviously tensed up a little bit as they took the lead first. And then uh, we had a couple balls that didn't go maybe where we wanted them to. Uh, but I think the story is the guy that I saw walking up probably to talk to Berkey and those other guys. Um, that was not in the scouting report. So our plan A was to start Seth and, and let him go. Five innings probably was what we were going to get. Um, because they battled a little bit with two strikes, I don't know that he was going to get – probably would have got to 100 pitches in the fifth at some point. So it would have taken him out in the middle of the inning and just kind of went knee-jerk reaction. Sewell's already hot, so we went to him. But – he could have given us even more than he, than he already did. Uh, but we didn't, didn't seem like we had much room for error. Just kind of seemed like one of those got, games where uh, they were doing well on the defensive side and, and offensively. Uh, things tensed up a little bit when we didn't get to the guy as early as maybe we thought we would. Um, trust me, we know he's got good stuff. Uh, but if you look at the prior history, um, you know, our plan A, like I said, was Seth, Sewell, and Russell. And if it wasn't for the rain, that's what happens. I don't know that anyone's plan A was, was Wanzing going eight innings, except for one guy, Wanzing. So kudos to him and anyone else that believes in themselves. Are there any other questions for Seth before we let him go? Right here on the front, or, sorry, in the back. Seth, obviously weird circumstances can pop up like weather did today, uh, any given game. What needs to happen over this next week, week and a half as y'all get into regional to be more prepared and, and ready to go if something like this pops up again? Yeah, just know that we can battle together and, you know, battle back late in games. You know, we, we've scored a lot on little outs before in the season, so I, I, I know we can do it. And then just, just big preparation here in the, in the upcoming days. All right, down here in the front. Ryan Sophie with Ball Report. Seth, what do you think this team as a whole needs to do to have success in an upcoming regional? Yeah, just, just like I said, just battle together. Uh, you know, we're all we're all one team. It's not, it's uh, you know, just get ahead on the pitching side and then get, get your pitch on the hitting side. And just keep it simple and 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 fight. You know, fight for all twenty-seven outs. All right. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, thank you. Coach. Are there any questions for <clears throat> Coach? 
down the front row on the right. Are there any positives to having this now week and a half off before starting the regionals? Yeah, I think in, in prior history, um, some teams have benefited from that. Uh, I think, you know, Beam asked if he was available today. I don't know if that many wanted the ball. If after the rain delay, some things happen, but, you know, you can choose to, you know, push the metal to the pedal. Um, pedal to the metal, I guess is the right way to say it. Brain's not working right now after that. Um, but you can gas some guys out and maybe a caution, a regional, or you can get some guys fresh and get them sorted, and, and it could benefit you. So a lot of it, a lot of it is probably, you know, how guys' mindsets are between now and then, because you know their bodies are going to get rested. And, and I think, you know, playing in this league or playing in any league, you know, a little bit of time off your feet or, or not, maybe not as many pitches thrown can probably benefit somebody this time of year. In the front row. Is when there's that tensing up and offensively there's been maybe some of these games with just inconsistency. What is it like as a coach, I guess, going toward the postseason, knowing inconsistency can show up? Um, yeah, I think frustration can show up, especially when, you know, you talk about the second half of the year when, when things start to get, the stakes get a little higher or perceived pressure is out there. Um, that means the frustration can mount quicker or it can escalate to a higher level. And you just started to see that with some guys, even prior to the game, swing in the cage doesn't go the way they want. And you got a lot of emotion, emotions involved. And I think you got to be careful about letting those emotions take control of you. Um, it's probably better to, to have passion, although I don't know in Webster's dictionary what the difference is between the two words. But, you know, it's, it's baseball's a, it's easy to coach, it's not easy to play. You know, how do you hold a baseball firm but loose? It's kind of the same thing. So it's a delicate balance of being in that box and competing, uh, but also being relaxed. And, uh, you know, I don't know how our guys did it in South Carolina, but a quick turnaround with a doubleheader, we faced one of the best pitchers. You know, I don't know if we had 10 set bats or not. I mean, sometimes the other pitcher is pretty good, um, but they rally and beat us in a heartbreaking loss, and our guys found a way to kind of switch the dial pretty quick and, and have a relaxed, you know, but competitive ABs in the next game. So. Whatever that formula is, by now they know it. Um, and when the game starts, we can't really play it for them. Uh, so it's up to them to have the discipline, uh, you know, to put that in play instead of getting wrapped up in self-emotion when, you know, maybe you hit a line drive right at somebody and it gets caught or, or for whatever reason it doesn't go your way. Uh, yeah. You okay. mentioned the word tense kind of in that dugout. Did you see that translate to when they did take to the batter's box? How do you combat that tenseness when you are kind of in these situations? Yeah, again, once the script is finished, you can look back on it and, and pick things out. I mean, as the game's being played, um, you know, if we see something crazy, a guy chucks a helmet all the way back in this tunnel, you, you know, we'll grab and talk to him. But, you know, you kind of just start to see you know, that it's not going well for us and, and there's a different air in the dugout and, and maybe a walk to the plate and in the box. So, you know, you encourage one another. And heck, it didn't happen today, but maybe even things spill over to where guys get fired up and, and you have words with somebody or a coach has words with a player. Um, that can be healthy, again, because everybody's competing. But again, for this team in particular, I think the formula that works is kind of there. Putting it into play, um, is another thing. Like I said, I think it requires discipline. And like Seth mentioned, it requires everybody to just play, you know, play for each other. Coach, what was your message to the guys immediately in that post-game huddle? Um, you know, you want to get out of the other team's way. Um, it's about as awkward as, you know, trying to say the right thing when you're shaking hands, whether you win or lose, uh, behind home plate. So we just want to get out of, um, you know, the next team's way. And just talked about the schedule ahead. We'll let them know what's up. Um, obviously, we're staying here this evening, and then we'll, we'll head back to Knoxville uh, early in the morning. It'd be good for the guys to be able to sleep in their own bed, and then we'll come up with a plan. And I did just mention kind of the one thing. Usually, there's a, a theme set for the day early in the day. And, and to me, it was, like I said, there's, there's a little, you know, extra stress in the air. And I don't think it was, guys, this is the playoffs or this is a tournament or anything like that. It just you know, maybe just a couple of individuals, and then you got a guy goes out there and throws it really well, and it, you know, kind of expands from there. On the right. Tony, you hit Blake Burt lead off game three at South Carolina and drop him into the seven hole today. You, you just trying to spark him, and have you seen any indication these last couple of games that, that maybe he will 
spark and, and catch fire here? You know, the leadoff at bat went well um, at South Carolina just because he, he battled with two strikes. Um, and again, he's battling today too. I mean, he hits one into the ground and maybe because the ground's wet, it sticks right there. I, I don't know how it went down. Um, but to me at this point, it's, it's all about, he starts in a really tall position. It, it all is about whether he's going to get into his legs or not. If, if not, he's going to look like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which, um, you know, not a bad place to vacation, but not a good, good approach uh, swing-wise. Um, and, and so we went with that strategy for kind of a long list of reasons that day. But for today, you know, Maui got hit and then hit Wansing in his two at-bats. And, uh, but we saw a different version of that guy today. Let's take one more over here. Tony, obviously, you, you know, we're not at Mississippi State two years ago or Ole Miss last year when they were able to kind of take some of that time off and do something big with it. Why do you think guys have been able to do that? Because I would think on the surface with baseball and the, the rhythms of the sport, if you take guys out of rhythm, I would think that would make coaches, you know, anxious. How, or, why do you think guys have been able to succeed? Yeah, this? and hats off to those guys that are that are national champions from those two teams. But there's uh, I, there's a lot of SEC teams I think that have benefited from going home from here, um, and, and it's everybody's here competing to win. Uh, but it, I, I, it's kind of a good segue on accident. We talked about delicate balance early. In my opinion, I think it's the league prepares you for every. There's nothing you have not seen. No fan is going to make a comment, no amount of fans, no noise, no facility, um, no pitching, uh, no hitter. You're going to see everything in this league. So it prepares you. And I think that's one of the reasons you often see a bunch of teams from our league in, in, uh, in Omaha. But the league in doing that or in preparing you also beats you up a little bit. Uh, so to recover and, and kind of get some rest time uh, between the finish of SEC play, including in, in, here in Hoover, uh, and then getting back after it, I think, helps people a lot. So, to me, those two teams probably had a, a, a little bit of their own thing going, uh, but I know it's worked for other teams as well, and I think it's that combination uh, of preparation and yet rest as well. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys.